On August 12, 1942, 300 survivors of the Battle of Bataan and the Battle of Corregidor arrived in Puerto Princesa, Palawan. They were interned in the old Filipino constabulary barracks, which now referred to as Palawan's Prison Camp 10A, or Palawan Barracks. They would spend the next two years building an airstrip with a concrete runway and revetments for 150 Japanese planes, using only basic tools. Two years later, 150 were left. An attack by a single B-24 Liberator bomber on October 19, 1944 sank two ships and damaged several planes at Palawan. More B-24s returned ten days later and destroyed 60 aircraft on the ground. The prisoners were made to dig bomb shelters inside the prison compound, consisting of three underground trenches that together could hold about 120 men. Beatings were common and rations eventually reduced to a handful of rice per day. In August 1944, 1,800 men of the 131st Battalion, 2nd Air Division, were assigned to defend the airfield under the command of one Captain Kojima. In December 1944, he sought advice as to action to take regarding the POWs at the time of enemy landing. Lieutenant General Seiji Tarada, 2nd Air Division Commander, after conferring with General Tominaga, 4th Army Commander, sent the following reply. At the time of enemy landings, if the POWs are harboring an enemy feeling, dispose of them at the appropriate time. On the 14th of December 1944, units of the Japanese 14th Area Army under the command of General Tomoyuki Yamashita brought the POWs back to their own camp. An air raid warning was sounded to get the prisoners into the shelter trenches the 150 prisoners of war at Puerto Princesa entered these trenches and the Japanese soldiers set them on fire using barrels of gasoline. Prisoners who tried to escape the flames were shot down by machine gun fire or bayoneted and thrown back into the trenches. Others attempted to escape by climbing over a cliff that ran along one side of the trenches but were later hunted down and killed. Only 11 men escaped the slaughter 139 were killed. Those that did escape to southern Palawan and eventual rescue were aided by Filipino scouts and guerrillas. On February 28, 1945, troops of the US 8th Army conducted an assault landing on Palawan during Operation Victor III. By March 2nd, American forces controlled most of the island and began hunting down Japanese stragglers with the help of Filipino guerrillas. It is believed that many of the massacre perpetrators died in the fighting, but there is no evidence of that. Moreover, there is ample evidence that many, including Kojima, escaped. The stories of the treatment of prisoners at Camp 10 and their murder were so horrific MacArthur himself visited the site while bodies were being recovered there. After the war, MacArthur essentially controlled the war crimes trials in the Pacific Theatre. On August 2, 1948, the Palawan Massacre trial began in Yokohama, Japan. On trial were several staff officers who had exhibited criminal liability through their failure to take command responsibility. Thus, most of the accused Japanese had very little direct involvement with the atrocities perpetrated at Porta Princesa. However, due to the chain of command, they were deemed responsible. Their attitude was described as callous indifference to the fate of the prisoners in their hands. Of certain import in the trial was the introduction of a written order sent to each Japanese branch commander in May 1944. It stated that during an attack on a branch camp by the Allies, the main force shall keep strict guard over POWs, and if there is any fear that the POWs would be retaken due to the tide of battle turning against us, decisive measures must be taken without returning a single POW. In hindsight, there is very little doubt regarding the true meaning of this order to camp commanders. Survivors Glenn McDowell and Doug Bogue helped the U.S. war crimes branch identify former guards and officers detained in Sagamo prison. Of the 33 charged with war crimes, 16 were put on trial and 6 were acquitted. Those found guilty on 8th November 1948 included Lieutenant General Seiichi Tarada, sentenced to a life term. 
Master Sergeant Taichi Taguchi, sentenced to be hanged, but later commuted to a 30-year sentence by Douglas MacArthur. The remainder was sentenced to between 2 and 12 years in jail. However, one name missing from this list is one Lieutenant Colonel Satoshi Oya. Born in Oita Prefecture on the island of Kyushu on April 17, 1893, he grew up near the famous Buddhist temple Futagoji. His father had died at just 53 years old while Satoshi was just a boy. Perhaps this is why he had married young and had five children of his own. Joining the Imperial Japanese Army in 1925, he had risen to the rank of Lieutenant Colonel in a relatively short time. The first time his name comes up in the records is on this plaque at the Japanese Filipino Amity Shrine in Valencia, Negros Oriental, Philippines. The plaque states, 174th Independent Unit under the command of Colonel Satoshi Oi, properly positioned in a series of bunkers, dugouts, foxholes and tunnels linked by connecting trenches, had battled the combined forces of the 164th Americal Division, United States Army, and guerrilla elements of the 73rd Provisional Division, 7th Military District of Negros Island. We covered this action in another video that's linked up above. Oya's name pops up again on the plaque commemorating the surrender of forces that had survived that battle two months later at Zamboangita. Oya handed his sword to a Colonel F. Wilson on September 22nd, bringing some 600 men down from the mountains with him. Not even a week later, the Ohio Wilmington News Journal of September 28, 1945, and the Manawatu Evening Standard of New Zealand on September 29th report that he was arrested for war crimes at MacArthur's request. He would later be tried in Manila, convicted and sentenced to death by firing squad. Only in 1948 was he transferred back to Japan. 52 Class C war criminals were executed between April 1946 and April 1950. All were hung at Sugamo Prison in Tokyo. Only one was executed by firing squad. Ken Dooley's book mentions that one other prisoner escaped Sugamo's gallows. Colonel Satoshi Oya had been tried at Manila and sentenced to death by firing squad. He had returned to Sugamo to testify at the war crimes trials in Yokohama. On October 22nd, he was processed out of Sugamo and placed in a bus to be transported to a nearby firing range. To the amazement of the guards, Oya fell asleep and had to be woken on arrival at the execution site, which was at Camp Drake near Tokyo, despite that being only 18 kilometers away. He thanked everyone involved, including the firing squad, walked calmly to a post there and was shot to death by six MPs. Ready. Hey. He had written a long letter to his sons, way long for me to read here in full, but there's a link to it in the description. It proudly displays his Buddhist faith and still fanatical devotion to the emperor, but also warns his son, who had risen to the rank of lieutenant in the army, to be wary of two lieutenants who had served under him on Negros, saying, Even if Lieutenant A or Lieutenant B pretends to show you kindness, you must never accept it. Lieutenant A was sentenced to death by me in the mountains for the following four reasons. One, that he retreated from Palinpinon without my approval. Two, that at the time of the retreat, he left one squad of machine gunners behind so that they were annihilated. Three, that he retreated leading his orderly behind. Four, that he was sent out twice as a patrol and twice made false reports. Lieutenant B once hurt a man of another unit on the ship and was punished by me. After that, he served me faithfully and I also loved him. But after all, he is a playboy from the red light district of Kumamoto. A playboy means a rowdy. As his actions are unpredictable and he can't be counted on, you should avoid his company. Most of my subordinates went to the Palawan Islands and died in action there. 
He goes on to commend other officers and men.